Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship and just welcome to the New Life United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you could come and join us today and, and if you would like, I understand there's a potluck afterwards and there's supposed to be some kind of a cake thing or whatever, so. Um, <laughs> I tried to convince the Sunday school class to have Sunday school and then go out to eat afterwards, but they outvoted me, so. A couple of things for us to be aware of. Our mission of the month is the United Methodist Wesley Foundations. There are eight foundations um, throughout the state of Michigan. And I had a video this morning that I was going to share, um, and we can't get it to work. So uh, it worked home at home on my computer just fine. So. But we will work on that and hopefully have that next week. But we are uh, taking our, our mission money this month for the Wesley Foundations. And, and I know in the video, the young man that's there is now a missionary. And his whole point of his testimony in this video is all about what the Wesley Foundation did for him. Because he said he felt like that his college years were the ones that really were helping to shape and form him who he was especially in his Christian walk. And we know that these are very vital ministries because they reach our college kids. They, they provide all kinds of support and programs. And, you know, whether it's in Ferris or, or Central Michigan or in Michigan State or the University of Michigan, um, down in uh, um, Western, uh, there are several. Like I said, there are eight. But they are very important ministries and they really feed and are really detailed to our college kids. And so if you'd like to contribute to that, um, put on your check or the envelope and put mission, mission of the month, put Wesley Foundation, and then that monies will be designated to that. Offering plates are in the back. Um, if you'd like to uh, put your offering envelopes, checks, or whatever it is that you may be doing, uh, just place those into those, into those plates at the back of the sanctuary. If you're watching this as a recorded video, we just encourage you to mail them to the church office. Are there any other announcements that aren't on the screen or in the bulletin that we need to be aware of? If not, let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious and holy God, we give thanks and praise to you for this beautiful day that you have gifted to us for this opportunity to be together in this place that we can come and we can worship you and we can sing songs and share together in words and hear your word that comes to us, oh God, that may it enlighten and encourage and strengthen us as the hands and feet of Christ in our world today. So bless us now, bless all of us in this place, either in this place in person or even as those who watch this as a recorded video, Lord, we just pray that you would just bless us all with your love and your grace, your peace and your joy. So be with us now in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand if you're able, let's share together in the call to worship if you'll respond in the yellow words. Lord, in these times, With that and in your company, help us to face challenges and struggles against all that is born of injustice. Would our children like to come forward? Good morning. How are you guys? Yeah? How's your summer breaks going? I got four lines here. Yeah? Do you know what senses are? How many senses do we have? Five. Five? <clears throat> do you know what they are? Sound, sight, taste, smell, and touch. Okay. So what do you think I have in the bag? Something to play with our senses. Wait. All right. One at a time. I want you to close your eyes. And I'm going to put something in your hand, and then I, I want you to kind of feel it, and then I'm going to take it back, and then I'm, I want you to tell me what it is. Think we can do that? Yeah. So who's going to go first? Me. <laughs> okay, Cole. Hold out your hand. Nobody say anything.
know what it is? An egg? It's all ball. Hmm. Which one of you is going to go first? <laughs> A marker. A marker. Pretty oh, close. Highlighter. Hmm. Who's going next? You ready? Okay, close your eyes. What is that? Don't know. These have been laying around my house this week. You guys know what those are? Hmm. You going next? It won't move. <laughs> A battery. There you go. was that? Some was easy, some was hard. We could have got something that was moving, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Story today that we're going to hear was that Jesus was in the midst of a crowd. And people were up just like, you know, like being at a concert or being at the mall when there's a lot of people, you know, how everything kind of is close and everything. And Jesus is in the middle of this crowd, and all of a sudden, somebody touched him. And he begins to look around, and he's like, who touched me? Do you know the story? Who touched him? Was it a woman? And why did she touch him? Do you know why she touched him? She had been sick for many years. She had a, a condition where she was bleeding. And she'd gone to all kinds of doctors, and you know, and, and, and that day she went to anybody and everybody that she could know, probably spent a lot of money, a lot of time, and nobody could cure her. But she knew, because she believed in Jesus, she just knew that if she could just touch him, that he had the power to heal her. And Jesus felt that touch because in the Bible it says the power went out of him. Now, what do you think happened to the woman? Was she healed? Yeah. Been years and she was healed. Can you imagine just a touch and this person was healed? Can you imagine today if we, we could just touch Jesus, a lot of the sicknesses that we have in our world today could just go away? Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool? Because Jesus has that power, right? He can heal us, and he can heal us from, from anything. Yeah. That's why we want to get to know Jesus. That's why we want to have a relationship with Jesus, because that's important, because he has that kind of power to help us and to heal us. Okay? So the power is in Jesus' touch is amazing. It's amazing. When nobody else could help this woman, just by touching his garment, his clothes, she was healed. She knew that if she could do that, she had the hope of knowing that he had that power. Yeah. 
Can we give thanks for that kind of power and what Jesus does for us in our lives? Can we do that? You pray with me. Dear God, we long to reach out and touch you and feel your power in our lives. So please help us to see and feel your power. Bless me, my family, my church, and my community. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to a time of prayer this morning, some things for us to be aware of is uh, continued prayers for Elmer Ashball, um, who has some doctor's appointments to um, kind of uh, spend some time in the hospital this past week, and, and so trying to kind of figure out what the next step and, and the direction that they can, in, can go in to kind of help him, so we keep Elmer in our prayers. Also, um, prayers for the Sharon Williams family, uh, Ann Cruzy's sister-in-law who passed away, and uh, we need to keep them in prayers as they contemplate this time of grieving, but as they move to a time of some arrangements and the kind of a closing process for them as well. Um, prayers for Art Shepherd, who has, fell, who has fallen and fractured his pelvis. He is home and healing. And so we keep Art in our prayers. And also prayers for Linda Leslie, um, who is going into some cancer treatment this or testing this week. Um, this is not the first time for cancer, so we keep uh, Linda in our prayers as well at this time. There is a joy here, and Joyce um, celebrates the joy that her Aunt Jane will be 100 tomorrow. And uh, so we do that. So we also continue to keep Dale Larson in our prayers, uh, Jim's brother um, who is dealing with cancer, and also uh, Lindsay Horrocks, uh, Jim's brother, who also is dealing with cancer as well. Let's come before God and let's offer these things before him in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we come. We come giving thanks and praising you. This is a time of worship and a time to, to acknowledge your presence and to become more aware of that presence in our lives. We are grateful for those who have come and are in this place together. But we are also blessed to have those who, who watch this as a recorded video later today and even in the days to come. And Lord, as you, as you bless all of us, we give thanks and praise. And it's always, Lord, that we need to know more and be more aware of your presence in our lives. And so, Lord, it help us to stop sometimes and just slow down and, and to acknowledge that. And to look for those signs of, of how you are ever so present and working in our lives. And so we thank you for this time, a time of worship. And we pray, oh God, that, that, that we would not only share as we sing and as we share words, but Lord, take time to listen and to see where you are at work, to, to hear your message for our lives, and to give us that true hope that we need especially in a world today with so much chaos. But Lord, we, we thank you for the joys that we celebrate, for, for birthdays, for friends, but Lord, for just God's people together, his brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're so, so thankful, Lord, that we can do that. And so Lord, this morning as we share in those joys that, that we raise, Help us not to take all of our joys for granted as we do so many times, but rather to acknowledge them before you, to celebrate them, and to share them with each other. But Lord, for these prayer concerns that we have this morning, for those that come to us on the cards, those who come to us by way of prayer chain in this past week, but even those that are coming Lord, especially as we think about Alan and his hip surgery at the end of this month. But others that we may know in our hearts and our minds, Lord, either, either of ourselves or family members or even of friends and neighbors. And yet, Lord, we know that there may be even prayer requests that will come later today for things that we don't even know about. 
but we are grateful. We are grateful that we can come and we can share in them, not only in this time, but throughout the week. And that we can pray for each other, the Lord, that we can support and encourage each other. But Lord, most of all is that you listen, you hear our prayers, and you answer them. So prepare us, O oh God, to receive your response. Prepare us, O oh God. Let your will be done. And if it is your will, then help us as the hands and feet of Christ to be a part of that response and love. So Lord, we thank you. And we ask that you would hear all of our prayers, spoken, unspoken, today, tomorrow, and even in the days to come. But we ask your blessing upon them and help us, O oh God, to be, to hear the response, but to be a part as well. So we raise it all before you, O oh God, and we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. But hear us as we come together that in one voice, as we share in the prayer that Jesus teaches us by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll be reading in Mark, the sixth chapter, verses 25 to 34. A woman was there who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a lot under the care of many doctors and had spent everything she had had without getting any better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Because she had heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. She was thinking, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Her bleeding stopped immediately, and she sensed in her body that her illness had been healed. At that very moment, Jesus recognized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, Don't you see the crowd pressing against you? Yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus looked around carefully to see who had done it. The woman, full of fear and trembling, came toward, forward, knowing what had happened to her. She fell down in front of Jesus and told him the whole story. He responded, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace, healed from your disease. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for Mary and for the reading of this word this morning. And we ask, O oh God, that we not only hear it with our ears, but hear it with our hearts and minds. So bless us now with this time. Bless the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. A week ago, we stood in this place and talked about the July 4th weekend. We talked about the Declaration of Independence and noting that it was a time to reflect and to celebrate our freedoms. But in order to understand our freedoms, we have to know how to exercise them with respect, care for our neighbors as ourselves, but also to love God and to love each other. And again, to do that with respect that so often we demand from others. But it's also a time to really what it understands to love each other. It means to care for each other as God cares for us. But today I want to talk to you about a different kind of freedom. I want to talk about a freedom that only Christ only Christ can bring. You see, by this time in, in the ministry of Jesus, he had really attained a celebrity status. No matter where he went, large crowds would gather and they would try to get as close to him as, as they could. They came from miles and miles around to hear what he had to say. 
but it wasn't also hearing what he said, but they also had come to understand the healing power that he had. Healing power. Now perhaps as we think about that time, we can understand that because there were really no doctors reliable as we would have today, no MRIs, no CAT scans, no x-rays, no diagnostic tools of any kind. And for many times, a lot of these folks, it was simply prayer and maybe some herbs and things of that nature. And what doctors were present at that time were doctors that had the most primitive skill and to knowledge. And so many times when people were sick and, and they would look for every corner, every possibility, they had become desperate, looking for something that would give them some healing or relief from what was happening. And so on this particular day, Jesus was in a place that, again, people had heard, and so they were rushing to him. And as always, he was there, responding. Many were healed, simply just speaking words, sometimes laying a hand. But the more he healed, the more people came. Some would say that if there were given times, there were literally hundreds and thousands of people who would come. Jesus would spend the entire day, maybe late into the night, trying to accomplish the healing and granting needs. But it's also said that when he would get into a crowd, they crushed in around him, seeking that touch, seeking that power, the touch of, of being able to either be touched by him or to touch his garment. And on this day, there was a woman who had been bleeding for over 12 years, what today we might call a hemorrhage. Can you imagine how sad and how uncomfortable and how humiliating that might have been? You know, Leviticus 15, it deems such a person as unclean. And when you're deemed unclean, it means that no one could touch you. and You had to stay away from others. It meant that her condition would prevent her from getting married. Her condition prevented her from going into the temple for worship or religious instruction. And this woman literally became a very isolated and solitary person. And no matter what she did, no matter where she went, she could not find anyone that could help her. In fact, the gospel tells us she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. And instead of getting better, she grew worse. She was paying out money resources, but she was not getting any relief. So here she was, as an outcast, a person without hope. So what do you do? What do you do when all of the doctors have done everything they can and you're no better? What do you do? Does it happen? Yeah, it happens today. It happens every day. But this woman came to Jesus. She had heard about Jesus, and she thought in her mind from the stories and the reports that she heard that this perhaps was the doctor, the physician that she'd been looking for. And so she is here in the crush of this crowd. She's in a very delicate situation because she can't cry out to acknowledge her presence for the fear of what might happen to her. The fear that maybe the crowd would push her off to the side because no one's supposed to touch her because she was deemed unclean. And how could they keep from touching her in a crowd that's pushing and pushing in a crowd like that? She ran the risk of getting injured or maybe even killed if folks began to know who she was. And who knows what that crowd might have done. It might have led to her death. But she can't risk speaking up and having Jesus to reach out to touch her. But she thinks to herself, 
She thinks to herself, if I can get just close enough to touch him, to touch the hem of his garment, she had hope that maybe if she could do that, then she could be healed. And she thought if she could just touch the hem of his garment, that Jesus wouldn't even know that she was there. But she could get healed. But the Bible tells us that immediately when she touched the hem of his garment, Jesus felt it. He felt it. He knew she was there. But then again, Jesus knows, doesn't he? We have a situation, we have a problem, we have a need. Jesus knows. You kneel down by your bed at night and you pour out your heart over some situation that seems to have no solution. Jesus knows. You take your deep, your deep, deep concerns to Jesus and he knows. This woman came out behind Jesus and, and very quietly tried in the midst of this crowd just to reach in and touch his garment. And when she did, immediately this bleeding that she'd had for 12 years stopped. And immediately she was freed from her suffering. And Jesus knew. He turns around and he looks at the crowd and he goes, who touched my clothes? He touched my clothes. Now the disciples were kind of put out because they're like, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus, look at all these people. Look how they're pressing in. How do you know somebody touched you? And now you want to know who it was. Well, look at the hundred people around you. Come on. It could have been any of them. But Jesus keeps looking. He keeps looking because he knows. Why would he do that? Why would he try to single out the person who had come and pressed through the crowd just to touch his garment and who finds immediate healing and relief from her suffering. And Jesus really wants to know who it was. He already knew. I mean, he's looking at her. He already knows who it is. But think about for a moment about the woman. She kind of sneaks in through this crowd, knowing her situation and what might happen. And she touches and she's immediately healed and relieved from her suffering. How do you think she felt? She was mortified. She was mortified. Now that Jesus is like, okay, who is this? And she's like, I don't want him to see me. She's probably backing up, trying to mingle into the crowd. But Jesus keeps looking for the, for the one who had done it. But it doesn't work, does it? She tries to hide, but it doesn't work. Because Mark tells us in his gospel, then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, who her, came, fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. Wow. Can you feel for her? Can you feel the struggle that's going on in her? For 12 years she's had this condition, and all of a sudden she's healed, and she's freed. But now she's finding herself standing before Jesus, falling to her feet, trembling with fear, telling the whole truth. It isn't bad enough that the condition of the bleeding was totally humiliating, totally isolating, and now she has to spill her guts in front of everybody. She's worked so hard for these past years to keep it as quiet as possible, and now it's out there for everyone. No more hiding, no more pretending. Now everyone knows. Why couldn't Jesus have just let her go? Why couldn't he have just let her go, kind of drift off into the crowd, never maybe to see her again? Why didn't he allow her to keep at least the last shred of dignity that she might have had? But Jesus always has a point, right? Right? The point is that the very community who on many levels had shunned this woman due to her condition, the community needed to know that now in this moment that she was healed 
and that she was free from her condition. See, confession is not only good for the soul, but confession helps to restore us to our rightful place in the community. See, Jesus wasn't exposing her to try to embarrass her, but rather he was giving her an opportunity to come forward and to truly be set free and to know that she could be a part of the community once again. That it was okay for her to be there, that she now being healed, the people didn't have to look down on her. They didn't have to cast her out. And she once again could be one to fully function in the community. The scripture tells us that he speaks to her and he refers to her as daughter. Daughter. If you go back and you look at the Greek, the word that's there for daughter, it is the only time that this is used in scripture. It's the only time that Jesus used this word. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Get that freed from your suffering. Be freed physically. Be freed socially. Be freed spiritually. Be freed just of the power of her touching his garment. It's a story that many of us can resonate with. It's a story that many of us cling to the hope that there is a time and place that within our lives, the things that we suffer from, that we can just reach out and by the touch of Jesus, we can be free. So there may be folks right here in this place today who are feeling hopeless about some situation in your life. Maybe it's a secret that you've kept from family or friends, but Jesus knows. Maybe it has to do with your health or your marriage. Maybe there's a situation in your family or, or with coworkers or, or, or something that, that's troubling you. Perhaps family members, maybe your business. But Jesus knows. Jesus knows. And maybe we can think to ourselves that we have a true hope that if we can just reach out and touch the hem of the garment that Jesus wears, that we could find not only the healing, but the freedom from the situation. You see, the story today offers us hope. Hope. It's something that I think most of us struggle with in our world today. When we think, just simply think about the headlines of everything that's happening in our world today, it's a little discouraging and it diminishes our hope. But the fact that this story offers us hope in the same way that it offered hope to this woman who had suffered with this condition for 12 years. First of all, we need to understand that Christ knows about your concern. If you have any question about whether Christ knows and is concerned about your situation, I assure you, he knows. Because the depth of his knowledge is unsurpassed and what he knows best is people. People. Jesus died for you and I. He gave his life for you and I. And he knows us best. He is the supreme lover of people. It was once said he can sense a person's true needs immediately and speak just the right word to heal or hurt. He knows your situation. But when we talk about true hope, here's the second thing that we need to know. It is very difficult to carry a burden, especially a heavy burden, alone. Ever tried to keep something bottled up inside of you? Does it have an effect on us? Yeah. It begins to wear on us, doesn't it? And it affects our behavior and our attitudes. The thing that we need to know is that we need to find someone that we can talk to, a trusted friend or a counselor, 
someone that we can talk to. And yes, you can talk to Jesus. Sometimes it's helpful to have a human being, a person, whom we can unload our troubles. I've always said that one of the greatest assets for me in pastoral care is not being able to talk, but being able to listen. And just visiting with somebody in the last couple of weeks, and we were having a visit, and I, and I said to them, I said, sometimes we just need to be able to talk and have somebody listen to us, and that becomes important. Tony Campalo, um, a writer and speaker, talks about this story. He went to a funeral home to pay respects to the family of an acquaintance. He arrived in the, to the funeral home and he went down the hallway and apparently that in this funeral home there were several funerals going on at the same time. And so he went into the, to the room where he thought the funeral was of the person he wanted to pay respects to. And it was the room that held the body of an elderly man. And he walks into the back, and there's no one in the room except a woman sitting in the front row. And she turns out to be the wife of the deceased. And Tony says that as he stood there in the back of that room, realizing that there's a service about to begin, and she is the only one there, he admitted how lonely she looked sitting there by herself. In fact, he says she seemed so lonely that he decided to stay for the funeral. And when the service was over, he drove her to the cemetery, and at the end of the graveside service, as he was driving her back to the funeral home, he confessed that he did not know her husband. And the widow said, I thought as much. I didn't recognize you, but it really doesn't matter. Tony said that she squeezed his arm so hard that it hurt, and she said, you'll never, never, ever know what this means to me. Because Tony said it meant more than the words that she could express. You see, burdens are so much lighter when someone else helps us to bear them. And this woman who had this condition, she needed the support of her community. That's why Jesus had her confess her situation. So think about in your own lives, is there someone that you can turn to? Someone who will keep your confidence? Someone who will listen to you without judging and know that Jesus knows your situation? But it sometimes helps to share those burdens with someone else. So Jesus knows it's hard to bear burdens alone. But here's the final thing that comes out of this story that we need to know. It simply is, do not forget your faith. Did you hear the words of Jesus? Daughter, your, what was the word? Faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. You know, so often is the answer to our problems is simply our faith in God. Barbara Walters once interviewed three celebrities, Johnny Carson, Johnny Cash, and Walter Conkite. Anybody know who those are? Okay. Choir practice Wednesday night, somebody said something about sharing a phone number, and I piped right up and I said, BR549. A couple of folks looked at me and go, what? I said, that's the phone number on Hee Haw. And they looked at me and they go, what's Hee Haw? <laughs> Barbara Walters once interviewed Johnny Carson, Johnny Cash, and Walter Concrete. Here were their responses in her interview. Johnny Carson basically stated that he was living for pleasure and having tried everything and been everywhere, he was fed up with the whole thing. Walter Conkright made it clear that he was looking at life rather philosophically and all he really was saying was, that's the way it is. Johnny Cash, on the other hand, as Barbara reported, 
admitted his background of alcoholism and drug addiction and the fact that he had virtually destroyed a marriage and wrecked his life, but he said openly that he had found Jesus. And Barbara Walters said that when he said that, there was a peace in his eyes and a con contentment in his voice. Because she said, unlike the previous two, Johnny Cash spoke of a hope for the future, which neither the other two had. You see, no doctors could have healed Johnny Cash. Only Christ could do that. Only Christ can heal a broken marriage. Only Christ can heal broken relationships within a family. Only Christ can help give us hope when everyone is telling us that there is no hope to be found. And it is only Christ who can deliver us from sin. We are grateful to live at a time where there's a lot of medical science and a lot of medical science that can do a lot for us today. And people have been helped in their marriages by counselors and credit counselors and addiction programs and resources that are available.